Hello and welcome to Ciao and Tell. My name is Reina and I'm so happy to be here today to talk about my subject, which is going from hate to love. Hate's a strong word, but even going from dislike to being okay with something, in this case, cooking or being in the kitchen. Um, most weeks, my topic is inspired by the guests I have on the show, and I have a really, really interesting guest on the show today who's gonna to talk about that. But before that, I actually put out, I tried something new this week, and I put out a request to viewers, um, you know, television viewers, as well as uh, all of you folks who watch the show online. And I put out a question, which was, what made you love cooking? So I wanted to find out what it was that took you from kind of being indifferent about cooking or really disliking it to loving it. And so I wanna read out um, a letter I got in from Nandini Spar, who also goes by Nan. Um, and she says it's Nan, n not uh, with one A, not with two A's like the bread. So she's Nan, not the bread, Spar. So this is from Nan, she says, um, I used to think cooking was a chore because of the busy household I grew up in. Then as I got older, I grew experimental and started finding recipes on websites like King Arthur and All Recipes. And her husband, she says, and family became my guinea pigs for all my creations. She, I'd follow the recipes to a T and then I would put my own Nan twist on it, adding something, omitting something, etc. I've dabbled in many dessert recipes, Italian and Asian recipes, and even one of yours. Samosas using wonton wrappers. I remember I did that several episodes ago, so this is really cool. And she says that was a hit. I can make traditional or Indian and Caribbean foods, but she loves to bake. So I wanted to say a big shout out to Nan. Thanks for writing in. And it's really cool to see people who go from disliking cooking to cooking. For me, it's always been something that was part of my family and tradition. So when I met people who didn't used to like cooking and then they have, developed a love for it now. I'm totally fascinated by that story. So without further ado, please welcome my interesting, amazing, and just totally crazy awesome guest today. Writer, blogger, author, dog lover, and fellow mommy to be, Kate Reynolds, welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much it's for having so me. It's so great to have you here. And uh, can we just do get this out of the way and do yeah, a belly bounce? Let's do it. Ha! <laughs> woo! Woo! <laughs> So um, yeah, Kate and I met a couple, few, weeks, couple weeks ago, ago. Yeah. and right away I'm like, wait a second, it's like doppelganger kind of a thing we had. It was scary how much our lives seem to be running in this like twilight zone parallel track. Really? <laughs> I, I was just amazed, but I've come to believe that there are no such thing as coincidences and we were just no. fated to meet. We both, she was like, I'll get the mocktail. So we were out at a friend's birthday dinner and you're yeah. like, I'm going to get the something, something, something mocktail or the tea or the, you know, lemonade. And I'm like, oh, a fellow mocktail drinker. Well, and then what, I looked down and I'm can like, what do you do when you're in our, our delicate condition? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, how many months are you? And then we got talking. Yeah. And, um, eventually actually not even eventually pretty quickly i think we started talking about food which I think is not uncommon <laughs> like maybe the second question after how many weeks are you <laughs> <laughs> so how are you feeling and what do you eat <laughs> yeah, exactly um well it's really great to have you on the show i've been so inspired by even in the short time that i've gotten to know you I'm just like, this woman is awesome. I'm so lucky to share a planet with you. Oh you know, God. you had well, like... you're a crazy little powerhouse yourself. <laughs> <laughs> trying she's, to keep up you with know, you is... I found out um, yesterday she's... Uh, what, you spend the afternoon at MGH drinking blood and eating popsicles? Yeah, basically. I Typical mean, Wednesday or, or afternoon. Or maybe eating popsicles. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, I, I've had some ups and downs with this pregnancy, and so I um, was anemic and ended up needing blood. So I went to MGH, and I got a nice little blood transfusion. And let me tell you, the maternity ward has the good stuff. <laughs> like, none of the ginger ale cracker stuff. Yeah. Uh, on, in the maternity ward. You got popsicles, you got chicken salad sandwiches. What? You, yeah, and check this out. Italian ice, three flavors. Excuse me very much. That sounds pretty <laughs> I fancy. Know. I was like, hmm, I'll have two red popsicles and a lemon Italian ice. <laughs> it was great. That's awesome. Well, I'm so glad you're feeling better. And you know, at night I message her, of course this chick is like on Facebook 24 seven, <laughs> so am I. So, <laughs> I'm like, are you gonna be able to make the show tomorrow? She's like, yeah, hell yeah. And I got props too. <laughs> I do. And my jaw hits the floor, you know, I'm like just, 
amazed at you've had such so many difficult challenges and the courage that you face them with time and time again in that one evening of speaking to you i was just in awe i'm so <laughs> inspired no it's great it's just wonderful because something always comes out of that and i think people who face challenges regularly in their life um very often have a choice to come out bitter or better is how mm-hmm. i see it and i yeah. think you've consistently chosen better well i like to say that you can't always control what happens to you in life but you can all you always have a choice about how you react to it that's fantastic i you love know. that advice please take that home with all of you <laughs> that's great it's the only way otherwise yeah. you end up being bitter and crying and basically driving everybody away because nobody wants to nobody be wants around to be a bitter away. Betty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your food journey as well because I remember um, seeing, I think it was maybe a post on your blog or your website somewhere saying, I didn't always used to love to cook. Oh, In no. Fact, I, I did everything I could as a kid to stay out of the kitchen. Huh. I, oh, yeah. Well, a part, part of it was I was a very bookish, nerdy, like, in my own world already kind of girl. Uh Like I was already writing and, you know, um, if I read a book that I didn't like the ending to, or if I saw a movie and I was like, this could be better. (laughs) So I was, I was essentially doing fan fiction in my own head, even before like fanfiction.net came around. Um, but you know, I was always reading and there was always something better to do. I was playing the piano. I was, you know, just whatever it was, it wasn't in the kitchen. Yeah. And how old were you? Like, do you remember being at this? Oh, this all time? the way through college. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I learned one dish from my mom before I went to college, and that was my spaghetti bolognese, which is also known as the marriage proposal bolognese. <laughs> I've received three. I took up two of them. Bolognese the, the or was marriage chicken, proposals? Just, I, I don't go that okay. way. So, you know. <laughs> But it was a thought. It was a consideration. <laughs> um, so why is it called that? Because I make it from scratch, and it's good enough that you will want to have sex with me for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to have to link to that recipe. Is it somewhere online? Can I am going to put it online. Um, I'm actually going to also include it in a cookbook that I am writing. I've gone from hating cooking and never wanting to be in the kitchen to actually writing a cookbook which is just so amazing i just think that's such what a story arc you know that itself is what a great story arc yeah um and with an amazing dish in the middle and so did you make that dish for your husband oh yes husband oh yes i think that was the second date and yeah well they say you know the way to a man's heart (laughs) is through his stomach and clearly you have Somehow master the art of that through your family's recipes. It's, it's that one recipe. It's the bolognese. I swear, <laughs> if you can make a good bolognese, you've got almost any guy you want. Unless, <laughs> unless he's a vegetarian. And even then, you can use vegetable protein in it. So, and I, I would say, I'm, I'm going to put this shout out, just you know, for the sake of equality even, I would say a man that can make a good bolognese sauce or a vegetarian bolognese, I'm taken already, but I would recommend it for the single ladies out there or the guys or whichever way you roll. You know, if you can cook well, I think that's so sexy. It it really is. And, you know, know, right now, like, I'm not feeling like being in the kitchen a whole lot (laughs) Um, for some reason. Maybe this baby is taking after me and in the early years won't want to be in the kitchen (laughs) at all. But I don't feel like cooking much these days. Yeah. And my husband, Eric, who is an amazing, awesome dude, he... Hi, uh, Eric. (laughs) Hi. <laughs> he has been in the kitchen and I've I've given him some of my basic recipes oh, and cool. he'll make them for me and it really has saved my life. And That's amazing. Yeah. Did he used to cook before? Oh yeah. Or? I think it was on our third no, it was our fourth date. He made me um fried chicken and macaroni and cheese. Oh my god. And we god. took it on a picnic to Walden Pond. So That is so romantic. Yeah, he's from the South, so he oh. actually has a very long, illustrious cooking heritage. Oh, well, I just have South. goosebumps right now. I'm just imagining, like, fried, I've had, a fried I've chicken had picnic. I've had real deal chicken dumplings, oh, chicken and dumplings oh, at yeah. his grandmother's house with real deal Holyfield sweet tea. Wow. Oh, my God. You'll, you've never had anything like <laughs> it. <laughs> that sounds... So how did you go 
from nerdy bookish Kate, which I hope you still are. And oh, I, yeah, yeah, that's, that's not <laughs> a problem. That will never go away. <laughs> to, but who hated cooking. Yeah. To being a cookbook author. Like, that's a, you know, we're going to fill in some blanks here. Um, I think cooking is something for me that is actually very emotional. Um, I, I like cooking when I feel I am nourishing the people I love. Oh, that's right. I know, oh. I know. We can we can have our morning sickness together now. Oh, no, it's cheap. <laughs> I am all for cheesiness. Hello, second trimester, I'm totally allowed. Like, I feel great. <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> but um, basically, I, you know, in this day and age, you know, it's wonderful that we have so much equality, mm -hmm. but there are also very, you know, few sort of politically correct and acceptable ways to cater to and serve and nurture another yeah. person. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not advocating the martini and slippers for the hubby when he comes home, but, you know, that's not a bad thing, especially yeah. if he turns around and does it for you. I think I'm and all for it. I, yeah. I think, you know, it can go whatever way works for each person, yeah, right? But exactly. I, I think, I mean, I'm relatively new in my marriage as well. Yeah. And I love doing that. Yeah. I love having dinner ready because I can. And, and there will be times where I'm not able to and he'll reciprocate. Yeah. He loves to cook too. I mean, I think if I had married like a non-foodie, non-cook, it would be a very different story. But oh, there would be other things. Well, you perhaps. might not have married him. In I that don't case. even. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, but uh, but I love this idea of doing it as a gift, even it as is. a gift of nurture and nourishment and a gift of love. And not to sound like too, you know, new agey or kooky, but I really feel that when you um, put intention or just emotion and you think about the person that you're cooking for mm -hmm. I find that you know what you make can be a little more nourishing mm -hmm. it, it tastes better to mm -hmm. them um, you know it just turns out better uh, you don't you don't even do anything different, different. But I really feel yep. like there's something to um, you know, the way you feel when you cook, like that for movie, sure. like Water, Water for, for chocolate. chocolate. I was just thinking of the same thing and her tears fall in and she's, and they're like, yeah. why can they not cook like her? You know, it's yeah. not, I think this is where it goes from beyond the recipe. This is where, and there is some weird magical element to it that is inexplicable and it cannot be documented, I think. I, I think science hasn't gotten to it yet, but not I think quite. it will someday. Maybe someday, but until then we'll keep cooking, you know? Yeah. I remember being told this too, um, friends would come to me for recipes and they're like, we did it exactly like you said, and it just doesn't taste the same. And I'm like, no, let's do it together. We'll do it yeah. again. And they're like, but why can I not replicate this at home? The same way I used to complain at home about my friends. Like, why doesn't it taste like Nani? My grandma, yeah. on my mom's side, is an incredible cook, but she's also an incredible nourishing soul. Yeah, She's so loving and so giving and very active and independent and strong. She was always in the kitchen, very quiet, but just constantly doing yeah. something with her Your hands. Your chapatis will never come up to snuff. Never. Oh my God. They're like <laughs> crackers compared to... I was like, why does it not taste the same? And she'd pass on the recipes to my mom when we were mm -hmm. kids and say, "This is, you do this and this. And it just... And my mom cooked with a lot of love too and it had a different flavor to it, but yeah. it's like it doesn't taste like Nani's food. No. There, there is just something it's to the way... It's a love. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, as I got a little older, in my 20s I was very um, career focused, climbed the ladder, corporate girl, you know, um, my idea of, um, you know, female advancement was I'm not going to be in the kitchen, you know, uh -huh. so it was, it was very much... A protest in some ways of yeah. the things that I had seen growing up mm -hmm. and you know and that I'd learned about in the position of women and feminism blah 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 yeah but as I got older I I began to really sort of change my assessment and my values mm -hmm. for what I'm here to do as a person and part of it is to be this ambitious achievement oriented person but part of it is to build a home mm -hmm. with someone mm -hmm. and to, you know, to nourish yeah. those around me yeah. as much as I can in my own way. And yeah. so part of what happened was um, 
A, I looked at my grocery bills versus my restaurant bills and my budget, <laughs> and I was like, holy fajoli. You know, it, it was like, yo, you got It's a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes all the difference. And, um, and then uh, it just really came home to me that I want to nourish the people I love yeah, and yeah. I want to take care of them and make sure they're in good health. Yeah. Um, but that they also enjoy life and enjoy food. Like yeah. food is a sensual pleasure. It's mm-hmm. hedonistic. It's, it's a necessity, but Absolutely. it's one of those lucky things that's both a virtue and a vice. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fine line. It's a fine line. We tread it every day. I mean, we can't not eat. Ice cream is you not know. a vice. <laughs> No, you can say that. We'll document it. It's 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 on there now. It's out there now. Um, I had it today, <laughs> and I regret nothing. <laughs> I love that. I mean, just to live with no regrets and to you know, there's a joyfulness. I think, and when there's a, I think when there's an aspect of giving and sharing and doing it together, mm-hmm. like not necessarily just the, doing the cooking together, but eating the food together, or just having that yeah. shared experience. There's something that grows. It's like the sum is greater than, or the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah. Somehow, you know, it's just the same way that, you know, you could just eat a, a tomato and a, a, you know, a little wedge of garlic and some olive oil separately. But somehow, when you put them together, yeah, it, it there's a whole different sort of alchemy that happens. It, it's it's really incredible. And so, you know, the problem I faced was going from the idea of yes, I want to do this and I want to nourish the people I love and I want to care for them and cook. And I only know how to make one dish. <laughs> yeah. you got to start Small somewhere. Problem. <laughs> so, so what did you do? Um, despaired for a little bit. <laughs> and then I was over at um, my husband, then boyfriend's apartment, which he shared with his sister. And I was rummaging through cabinets for something. And I found, and I stole it and made a copy of it, um, <laughs> This, this is the Madison Street United Methodist cookbook from Clarksville, Tennessee. Wow, that's cool. From 1978. No way. So this is Southern church lady food. (laughs) And if you can't learn to cook from this, there's no hope for you. Let me me see if I can um, show this on the, uh, the little camera, if you can... Maybe see that. I'll zoom out a bit and let's see if you can get that in there. Look at that. That's it's so. This is so lovely and like old school. I love it. Yeah. Um, I collect books off the street. I got like a, a one about cake decorating the other day. Just somebody had left it out, very Cambridge style. Look at this <laughs> from Tennessee. And uh, what do you have? Old fashioned banana pudding and ice box pudding. Back when they called things ice, ice box. Boxes. Yeah. It's and what, what what's interesting about these that, you know, also intrigued me my bookish nerdy side was that it was um this is awesome. It's it's a trace of original ethnicity and culture as uh-huh. well. You know, you have um you know, they do amazing things with zucchini. They have like three pages of Really? Back then? Oh yeah. They have Mary Taft zucchini. Mary they, Taft. Married, um, but the recipe is by Mrs. Richard B. Austin. Oh, and I do love this. Like every single person, like every every recipe has a has an author who's like a Mrs. So and So or a Miss. Blah, they have blah. a fr- uh, fresh squash ring. They have squash fritters, squash casserole, zucchini, squash casserole, squash casserole. <laughs> Colorado baked beans, barbecued grit baked beans, marinated beans, quick baked beans, sour cream, cream beans. <laughs> so, it's, I mean, I love it. It's old school, like comfort food, it sounds yeah. like. And, well, um, and you have things like um, hot brown, which is a very traditional southern dish. Just called hot brown. It's called hot brown, and it's it's Sounds kind like of... something I would like. <laughs> I might Don't be married to one. <laughs> Maybe we are a little hot brown. <laughs> we got brown crud. We have brown crud, for sure. <laughs> but it's um, English muffins with a sort of creamy cheese sauce, and um, it's just, it's a yummy sort of warm, breakfasty, brunchy oh, type of food. Yum. But, you know, there's next to it um, a recipe for manicotti. Oh. And, you know, the thing that I found was they, they have old Irish recipes, they have old Italian recipes, okay. and even Polish recipes yeah, yeah. that must have come originally to their family or, yeah. you know, been brought through yeah, yeah. the whole, you so know, generations. Like a, a, 
like a collection of sort of immigrant recipes at the time. Well, it's and like a historical document in a way. Is, well, is and I these like, are recipes you know. that I, from the look of it, they've been here and Americanized for several generations. Mm-hmm. So you get to see, you know, manicotti or, um, you know, uh, marinated tomatoes or, um, you know, a tomato bouillon. But you definitely see it from... Um, a, a change from the original recipe to using American ingredients mm-hmm. and things like there is not a recipe without canned soup in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember that era of canned soup oh. casseroles. I mean, I didn't live through it, but I have the books because my mom yeah. got them from the U.S. They used to live here in the 70s. So we have like oh. the old school books. And it, so, but it's amazing what they I think do with them. <laughs> like, I, there, there's one where you take um, crescent rolls and you roll them out and then you add some diced up cooked chicken, some uh, quick sautéed onions, yeah. and a little bit of cheese and some cream of mushroom soup. Roll it up, bake it through 30 minutes at 350. Ah! <laughs> and then you die of bliss and, die of bliss. and cholesterol. <laughs> so you learned to cook from this book and many others like it, and then... You're doing a very different cookbook now you have out on the market. Um, tell us about that book. That okay, so it's, it's kind of different from your old school casseroles, right? It is, but one of the things I learned from this book, um, and just from cooking in general, is yeah. that you don't need necessarily... There are people who really enjoy um, highly flavored sauces and complex spice mixtures. I'm not one of those. So my cooking tends to be very sort of straightforward, simple, you know, let's make a nine by thirteen casserole and put it in Tupperware for the week. You know, hey, and you gotta eat. You know, uh, well, and realistically, you know, especially when yeah. you work in an office and you're commuting, and it's very hard to do, especially when you get cookbooks where it's like, for lunch, try an artisanal <laughs> bread sandwich with alfalfa <laughs> sprouts and tofurkey <laughs> with a chipotle aioli mayonnaise <laughs> and some slices of avocado. Yeah, <laughs> guarantee you that thing will be soggy by lunchtime <laughs> and I will eat a cheeseburger of revenge. <laughs> so, so this book you're doing instead, I, and you were telling me this outside. Um, it's called The Ketogenic Diet uh-huh. and um, I did it for, I published it in the spring. It's uh, called The Fresh and Sizzling Summer, but really the recipes can go year round. Oh, cool. And it's um, on Amazon or it's something? It's on Amazon. It's under Kate Reynolds. <laughs> Um, Let me just say, Kate, your name is spelled very interesting too, going with the rest of you, yes. C-A-I-T, yep, C-A-I-T, which I was not expecting when I first saw your name. I was like, wait, wait. oh, cool. Yeah, of and course. then it's Reynolds like the rap. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a lot of my friends do the ketogenic diet or the Atkins diet, and yeah. it, it's, a, it's a great tool, but you have to be very careful and use it properly. Yeah. Um, you know, there are a lot of health restrictions around it. It was originally developed by pediatricians in the 19th 1920s to help children combat epilepsy. I had no, I had no idea. Yeah, I have so, heard the epilepsy thing of late. Yeah, um, in the by eliminating research, carbohydrates but, almost yeah. completely, um, it reduces the need for Repro- medication in, in certain cases. I didn't realize it was that old. Yeah, but um, in the case with children, you know, and as should be the case with adults, when you do it, you have to have a very strict set of nutrition guidelines. Huh. Um, especially for children because they need certain nutrients yeah, that, yeah. It in becomes order hard to grow. To, right. um, and for adults, you know, what happens is people go into this, they do the you know, introduction phase and they go whole hog, cut all the carbs out, eat bacon till they turn slightly pink, <laughs> <laughs> and then they drop it and they, uh, you know, they lose all of their progress. But what happens is as you lose weight, you have to change your ratios. And so what I do is I kind of educate you as to both how to spend three hours on a Sunday, painful as it is, just buckle down and do it on a Sunday night. You cook for three hours, you put it in Tupperware, and And you've got breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the week. Well, I would definitely recommend that people check that out. And I'm so, this is so amazing that you get to share this story. And you reminded me actually talking about children. I want to put this out there, a question for the next live broadcast we have, which is in a couple weeks because I'm traveling next week. Um, And it has to do with children. I'm doing an episode actually on children who love to cook. And I want to find out from viewers and readers, um, write to me at Reina. 
uh, what is my email? <laughs> Reina <laughs> at kitchen-intuition.com and tell me what your kid loves to make and why they love to make it. Send me recipes or stories. I'd love to hear from you and we'll read it out on the air. And you can find this episode um, and older ones plus recipes and posts on my website, www.kitchen-intuition.com. I want to say a huge, big, fat thank you from <laughs> one mama up to be to another mama to be, Kate Reynolds. <laughs> Thanks so much for being on the Thank show. Thank you for having what me. What a pleasure. We're going to definitely have you back. We'll compare bellies again. Oh, we'll definitely. You know, we'll we're be, going to go eat now. We'll, we'll do a time <laughs> lapse of our bellies getting bigger. <laughs> In the meantime, thanks for watching. Thank See you, you. next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>